Hello everybody, my name is Anthem. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play here in Hearthstone 4. The new order, we're going to be playing as the United States. I think the last time we played, I mean, we played New Order recently. We played as Germany, but like the whole thing is Bormund. Um, but last time we played as United States, that was when the mod first came out. I want to say, was it 2020? Was it 2020 itself or was it like 2022? I don't remember exactly, but that was years and years and years ago we played as United States. As far as I know, it, there's been a lot of changes to the mod, to the United States specifically since then. So I am excited to uh, get into this. I also did post a poll. Uh, for who we're going to be trying to going for for the 1964 election. It does seem like right now uh, it is going to be the NPP, the uh, Progressive Party. We'll be uh, we'll be looking more at that, you know, as, as we go in here. And I don't know how exactly or when exactly it'll be. Obviously, it's going to happen in 1964. But probably be like episode 12 or something. I'm not too sure. But anyway, here we go. If you don't know anything about the new order, uh, it's going to be a lot of reading events. Primarily reading events and a handful of proxy wars. We'll have a lot of fun. Okay, the nation unmoored the election of 1940. In his second term, Democratic President Franklin D. Roosevelt faced a growing conservative backlash, one that viewed his New Deal as starting uh, the United States down the same dangerous path as Russia. Afraid of another term might bring political ruin, Roosevelt decided not to seat the uh, presidency again. Instead, he convinced the party to nominate his close friend and one-time administrator of the uh, Public Works Congress, Administration Harry Hopkins. To ensure his friend's election, Roosevelt tackled uh, the more center and made concession to isolationists. Meanwhile, conservative Republicans, including Ohio Senator Robert A. Taft, threw their support behind charismatic but inexperienced Manhattan District Attorney Thomas Dewey. Soon after, Hopkins uh, learned he had stomach cancer. Bedridden, rumors about his condition swirling in the press, he lost to Dewey by less than 0.4% of the national vote. President Thomas Dewey rewarded his isolationist backers by appointing many officials aligned with Senator Robert A. Taft. He then embarked on a campaign of dismantling Roosevelt's New Deal, while his cabinet dismantled the United States' military capacity to avoid direct confrontation with the rising German Reich and Japanese Empire. These developments proved disastrous. Recession hit. Japan and Germany declared war. By 1944, with the war effort collapsing, Dewey would find his hopes of re-election saved by General Eisenhower's defense of Scotland, as well as the split in his opposition between a moderate party insider, James Farley, and progressive Republican Harry Wallace. President Dewey limped into his second term. With the country coming apart, Dewey agreed to negotiate a peace with the Axis, in which the United States would surrender its specific holdings and place the territory of Hawaii under a 100-year lease. The Republican Party faced landslide defeat in 1946, but many Americans blamed the socialistic policies of Roosevelt for weakening America and making the war inevitable. The 1948 election tested these attitudes, matching isolationist Republican Robert Taft against the internationalist Democratic De uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Ike would win, but not before exposing a deep dissatisfaction with the establishment. Ike attempted to uh, complete Roosevelt's unfinished work. Um, however, a rip between the progressive Vice President Burton Wheeler over the intervention to defend Portuguese Angola from German sabotage his presidency. In 1952, he nearly won re-election. Ike's second term was disappointing. Wheeler proved unable to guide the Senate uh, to a popular policy, and Eisenhower resorted to executive order to pass his agenda. As the satisfaction grew, a new Nationalist Party formed to support General George Patton in 1952. After Ike, the establishment was unwilling to support his progressive vice president, Burton Wheeler. Instead, Democrats nominated uh, moderate Estes K uh, Kuffer, while the Republicans nominated uh, moderate Everett M. Dirksen. The nationalist and revived uh, progressive party became home to those disaffected, disaffected with the mainstream. Kuffer barely triumphed, but the uh, backlash was swift. Uh, in the midterms, some of the new parties forced themselves onto the ballot. Chaos reigned, with senators elected to a third of the popular vote and allegations of fraud and corruption. The nationalists, progressives, and others realized that they could vanquish the establishment if they worked together. They formed an alliance of convenience, the National Aggressive Party, led by progressive uh, Scoop Jackson, states' right leader James uh, Fulbert, Republican Democrats, seeing the existential threat, formed a coalition of their own, led by conservative Richard Nixon and liberal John F. Kennedy. Six-party system. The Republican Party, a party of conservatives, found itself led by uh, the greatest survivor of all, Richard Nixon. A master of negative campaigning, Nixon survived the financial scandal of 1952 and near defeat in the 1954 uh, California gubernatorial election and forced his way into Kaffer's cabinet as Secretary of State. He styles himself as the leader of the silent majority, even as his dominant unpopu domestic uh, unpopularity grows. Beneath him stands the hardline Republicans of Barry Goldwater, this, uh, the definite hawks who believed in immediately ending Roosevelt's excesses, and responsible Republicans of ne uh, Nelson Rockefeller, New England moderates who prefer gradual conservative reforms. 
The last few years of crises have made it a struggle for Nexon to retain his leadership. However, he determined to retain leadership of the Rhode Island Party, uh, preserve the RDC, and see himself re-elected in 1964 at any cost. The Democratic Party, heirs of the legacy of Roosevelt, Eisenhower, and Keffer, find itself led by the charismatic Vice President John F. Kennedy. Epitomizing all the hopes of the new age, Kennedy has urged his nation to look past its failures and embrace the future. His decisions to uh, meet uh, leaders of the Republican civil, civil Rights Movement, urge military restraint, and advocate for aggressive solutions to economic stagnation have made him a beloved figure to many, even as they infuriate the president. Beneath Kennedy, fascism rages. On one side stands the Labour Democrats, represented by Congress by Senator Le uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, these figures see the New Deal as incomplete and seek to expand and build upon its programs. On the other side stands the Dixiecrats, led in Congress by Senator uh, Russell, Richard Russell Jr. These figures largely still understand outrage by Kennedy's meeting with black leaders. They seek to preserve segregationism. Now, I know for our um, last campaign, we did do uh, the LBJ. I think we elected him in 64 and 68. So I think our entire campaign in... Um, in our in our first time playing the United States was all LBJ all all LBJ all the time. We'll see kind of how that goes. We might you know switch back and forth, kind of have two different leaders in sixty four and sixty eight. We'll see. The Nationalist, the Nationalist Caucus is the largest group of the new Nationalist Progressive Pack, representing not just the Nationalist Party but various populist conservative groups such as the Conservative Party of New York, States Right Party, and the Louisiana Progressive Party. And by the reactionary passion, the coalition has many faces it presents to the current events. Leading the caucus in the 1964 is Alabama Governor George Wallace, an avowed segregationist outraged by what he sees as the lawlessness of the civil rights movement. Also among the nationalists are many former Warhawk Republicans, led by Margaret Chase Smith, who defected to the Republican Party after the U.S. defeat in World War II, and the remnants of Senator Robert A. Taft's Midwestern isolationist movement, which seek the revival among the Christian right to feel adrift in a rapidly changing nation. The second largest MPP caucus is that of the Progressives, a grab bag of different liberal groups. It includes not just the resurrected uh, Progressive Party, but also the Farmer Labor Party, Nonpartisan League, and Liberal Party of New York. Or more ideologically unified than the Nationalists, Progressives are no less volatile. Leading the party in the 1964 is Scoop Jackson, a New Deal liberal and war hawk hoping to a rematch with Nixon. However, fortunes change in a day, with many progressives, particularly those unhappy with Scoop's attempts to make peace with the anti-civil rights officials, have been seeking a different challenger in 1964. Whether they succeed could depend on forces outside of their hands. In Cox's fringes sits Michael Her uh, Harrington, leader of the Democratic Socialists of America. While many scoff at the socialists in the White House, Harrington is happy to bide his time. The extremist. While more respectable NPP leaders try to ignore them, the pact also includes many smaller groups whose hostility to the establishment includes not just the two main parties, but also the American system itself. These parties view the Republic as a failed state, with the radical action needed to save its people. The Marxist caucus, led by the Communist Party USA's Gus Hall, is one such group. Composed of avowed communists and socialists, the Marxist ca uh, caucus sees the average American as exploited by the capitalist class and the uh, current fight over the civil rights to be the symptom of a larger class struggle. Eagler, uh, even smaller and more fringe than the Marxist, are the uh, Sovereignists. Sovereignist. A vile uh, group of fascists and white nationalists, few but even the most uh, radicalized Americans would dare associate themselves with them. Their leader, Francis Parker Yawkey, has uh, made his reputation given a voice to the dark fantasies of aggrieved uh, whites to see Germany as an ally, not an enemy, in a coming war. Okay. So, for our first national focus, you can see a lot of these things have already been taken. These are kind of like everything that's led up. I'm guessing from like 1960 to now. Toe of the middle line. Cold War. So, we can go against Germany, against Japan. Cannot do you quite yet. So, I mean, we can only go against Germany or Japan. I feel like for now... I mean, we're kind of an interesting spot, right? Being the United States. Obviously, we have Germany over here. We don't like the Germans. But the Japanese... Uh, act, um, actively occupy American territory. They own the port down here. They've got another port up north. They actively occupy our uh, stuff. So we're going to go for an anti-Japanese uh, focus first. Next up, for our research slots, what do we want to take? It is 62. Let's go with... I, mean, I, I have to kind of look at the uh, TNO tech tree again. It's been, it's been a while. So I mean, it is 1960. So let's go for... Better schooling, better hospitals, uh, better prisons, better army bases, as well as consumer goods production factor plus two percent. Sounds good to me. For our production units, we have 
A ton. We have one extra one. Okay, throw that into civilian factories then. Hey, there we go. What are you? Do not care about this. Okay, that's fine. Next up, all of our unassigned divisions. We have 34 troops, which is not that many. We'll split this into two armies for now. Get our field marshal. Maxwell Taylor, congratulations. We are going to have you kind of hang around Washington for now. Oh, we only have 12 divisions? Okay, we'll shrink you even more then. Ten, twelve. okay, looks good. We will then have you be on the border with Mexico, and we'll throw Purple Army right now. Half of you on this base, half of you there. Seems... We don't have any other territory, right? Like, we have some allies who are, of course, part of the Organization of Free Nations, which is kind of similar to our NATO. And we have all of our Navy just kind of hanging around Hawaii. Just surrounding it, just letting the Japanese know what's what. Uh, can I select all boats? I don't really th think so. But I would like all of our boats to uh, please come home. I don't know if I can actually do this the way I want it to. Okay, combine all of you into one fleet. Combine you into one fleet. Uh, red... Let's just throw you into port here, and then we'll combine you. There's a lot of stuff we need to kind of click on. Okay. We also want to make sure we are on speed 5. And, of course, we have our lovely United States government. The Senate is currently co controlled by the Republican uh, Democratic Coalition. Last election was 427 to 107 against Henry M. Jackson. And I guess we can actually look back at all the uh, old elections, so let's see. Hopkins against Dewey. Dewey against Farley. 48 was for... Uh, wow, that's, that's a blowout right there. And who is this? Was Eisenhower barely was able to win. A lot of third-party votes down there. Okay, okay. What about uh, popularities? Stays controlled by the Republican... Do I have to, like, select somewhere? High support, middling. I mean, we have a lot of support. Everyone, no matter where we are, both loves us and hates us. National, RDC. And then, okay, so this is between Republicans and the Democrats. And then NPP. It's a lot more um, divided. Everyone, no matter where you are in America, they're okay with the Republicans or the Democrats. No, no matter really where you're at. The NPP very much is split between... The progressives and the nationalists, right? The South loved the nationalists, the North loved the progressives more. Not anything super surprising. You know, Maine being split like that, it's not too crazy. Iowa being split, not too crazy. Of course, nobody anywhere really likes the Marxist or the um, the sovereignist, which also is not super surprising. I know you can... I don't think we're going to go for either of those parties, because I think it requires a lot of foreign, for, like knowledge of the new order and the American system to actually... You know, fandangle your way into getting them into power. Anyways, for our decision, smoke and mirrors. Barry Goldwater is a leader of the hardline Republicans who uh, stand for freedom via restraint government. Factions waning. Uh, there's also a lot of stuff in here, by the way. Like, it's a complicated mod. Nelson Rockefeller is leader of the responsible Republicans. And again, we're going to try to go for NPP for the progressives. So we'll kind of try to support them where we can. Democratic Party. Johnson is a leader of the Labour Democrats. They're currently strong, but lacking of support. Okay. Overall, the coalition durable support and lacking approval. The odd coalition couple of Republican Democratic parties has rapidly become a fixture of American politics since the creation of the late 50s. It uh, results in two beleaguered political establishments keen to reserve their power in the face of the surging political insurgency. It stands to only lose grounds. Okay, so we can't really do anything here. I'll take my army navy experience. I don't think it's going to do too much. Stable ele uh, election animation flash. That might be important, so I'm not going to do that. So we're going to turn you off. We'll turn you off as well. For our dockyards, what do we want? A convoy sounds great. We'll get five convoys. This whole, by the way, this whole first episode, I'd be surprised if we even get a week into January. It's going to be it's a lot of setup. Next up, let's go for more rifle production. Ah, let's go five rifle production. More trucks, more support equipment, more artillery. Give me more tanks, more APCs. 
more jets, more helicopters. Um, aside from that, is there anything we need? A lot of aircraft, okay. So which, which aircraft do you want? Close air support. Boom, done, okay. Throw five of those bad boys on there. You then want transfer planes, tactical bombers, uh, spy planes, jet interceptors, tactical bombers. We'll throw like four of you in here. I mean, as America, we really just want like a strong air force, right? Being able to rule the skies would be very, very nice. Interceptors. Interceptor, interceptors. Let's go th three on you. Transfer planes. I'll just build one of you. I don't care about that too. Eh, we'll go two. I'll, I'll be nice to them. Is this not a CAS? Or is this like a carrier CAS and that's why it's uh, messed up? CV, CV. Okay, I think I think that was the, um, the air one. So get more close air support. Uh, Thompson, Walker, Bulldog. Why not get three of those bad boys? Heavy tank chase. He apparently can't do that. Pershing, congratulations. We'll throw five of those bad boys on there as well. Armored car. We'll do two. Um, what else we got in this list? Super heavy tanks. Why not? We'll get, we'll get like three super heavy tanks. And aside from that, let's get some ICBMs. Five on you. And... Improved scout. Improved, you know what? Why not some attack helicopters as well? We get five of those bad boys. Next up, for our... Throw this to the bottom of the list. For our navy. We'll put, we'll put five on the aircraft carriers. Uh, Albany class. Let's throw five on that bad boy. For... The Des Moines. We'll go for six. There we go. Fill all that up. Doctrines. We already have one on you. Uh, do, 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 do. Global fleet distribution, I think, makes sense for you know what we are. Insufficient resources. We have AAA credit rating, fantastic. And if I'm not mistaken, I can I buy resources? I I, I try to remember how exactly it works. We need chromium. Auto balance. Auto balance. Is it a fix it? Is it auto balanced? Recurring trade plus thirty. I don't. I don't know if it's working or not. To be completely honest with you. So it's ten to one. I don't know. We'll fifty and okay. No. Okay. No. 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 It is working. It is working. Yay! We're we're, we're importing it. Look at us go. I know what we're doing. Free selling factories. I'll read this in a second. Hey, look, we got through the first week. Okay. We need better hospitals. So let's build some hospitals in New York. Build them in Washington because we got a good modifier there. Uh, where else we got some good modifiers? 60%, 50%. Let's build one in Indiana. We'll build one in Texas. We'll build some in uh, Utah. Sounds... Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. That looks good to me. No template we don't care about. We're not training any units. I also don't care about that right now. A problem of logistics. Admiral Thomas H. Moore and the uh, planning staff in the Indian Ocean Command wearily eye the map splayed across the table. The lines, the borders outlining the nation of Southeast Asia. From the vast Indonesian archipelago to the jungles of Indochina. Yet for the moment, all eyes are focused on Malaya and the task of supplying the rebels on the peninsula. Unless the rebels can secure a port, we can't do much, one of the lieutenants bluntly stated. Thank you, officer, for pointing out the ob obvious. One commander snapped back. We're not in the business of the impossible. Uh, we have the perch and all the ballo converted for uh, transportation duties available. We might be able to uh, Shanghai the sea line from the uh, Atlantic too, another officer replied. It won't be much, but it's better than nothing. Cylon ventured a third, pointing out to the map. Access to the base of the uh, Trimcole would be a boon to our ability to reach Southeast Asia. That'll have to go to the State Department, the commander replied. Don't count on it. How about the MAC, Airlift Command? We can try running C-130s uh, out of the Cocoa Islands and use tankers to refuel them midway. I'll have to talk to the Air Force about that one, more interjected. We're going to have to do a few trial runs first. But uh, I agree with the Lieutenant. Until the Rebels can uh, get their hands on a port, our hands are tied. A new page will be added to the Global Conflict Suggestions Category. We can send aid to the United Malayan Anti-Japanese Front, but we cannot send boots on the ground until they have secured another port. Okay, Malaya. 
the anti-Japanese front, who is uh, these bad boys here. So they need to push away the port uh, Klang, and I think that literally is about it. Foreign policy. Any intelligence? Fifty percent support. Destabilize Japan. Okay, I'm trying to remember how exactly this one works as well. We can crank the budget to sixty million. We're rich. We can we can do whatever the hell we want. Experience needs fifty. We don't have experience for any of this stuff. We only got five percent experience. Okay, we'll click this more than that. Okay, so we need more command power for this. And for our operations here. Damage the ability of Germany to do... I don't care about Germany's ability to do anything in Southeast Asia. It's more of a more of a Japanese thing, no? I would think it'd be more of a Japanese thing. But I would say, at least for right now, kind of getting the uh, our foot in the door, so to speak, for the good old US of A. I think it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode here. So if you enjoyed it, thumbs up. Not do it, you thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.